Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are keeping well. My name is Priyanka Singh and I am your science teacher. So today I am here to start with the chapter 5 of class 8. And the name of the chapter is Combustion, Flame and Fuel. So let's start this topic. Many chemical reactions take place around us such as cooking for food, rusting of metals, growing of plants etc. Some chemical reactions are very fast like rusting of iron. The chemical reactions occur due to the absorption of energy called endothermic reaction. Endo means within reaction. Hence, heat is needed for these reactions to take place. Other types of chemical reactions release energy and are called exothermic reactions. Exo means out. Hence, heat is released in these actions. In every chemical reaction, a new substance is formed with different properties from the starting substance. Energy is needed for many of our domestic and industrial activities such as for cooking, heating purposes, for transportation, for generation of electricity, etc. The needed energy is obtained by burning or combustion of a substance. Let us discuss it in detail. Combustion. We see so many changes taking places around us. We see the paper burning, the sugar chairing, food being cooked, burning of coal, etc. The chemical processes of burning is called combustion. In other words, we can say that the chemical aspect of the processes of burning is said to be combustion. Combustion is an oxidation process. Combustion cannot take place without oxygen. An oxidation reaction in which energy is given out is called combustion. The difference between combustion and burning is that no flame is seen in case of combustion, while in burning, a distinct flame is visible. A substance that shows combustion is said to be combustible. It is also referred to as a fuel. Conditions necessary for combustion. There are three conditions necessary for combustion. They are presence of fuel, oxygen and heat to burn the fuel. Okay students, are you able to see this diagram? This diagram is showing the things which are necessary for combustion. And fuel, oxygen and heat is required for this process. A fuel is a substance that easily catches fire and produces heat. Oxygen is a gas without which anything would not burn. Heat is necessary to raise the temperature of a substance to its ignitious temperature. Ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire. Match 6 starts burning when it is rubbed on the sides of the matchbox as on rubbing the match stick friction is produced. This raises its temperature to the ignition temperature. There are some substances which have a very low ignition temperature and catch fire easily with a flame. Such substances are said to be inflammable substances. Some inflammable substances are LPG, alcohol, petrol, etc. So students, it's time for activity. And the aim of this activity is to show the air is necessary for combustion. And the material required is two candles, matchbox and a glass tumbler. Now we are moving towards the procedure. Light two candles and place them on a table. Now place an inverted glass tumbler over one burning candle and observe after a while. Now observation. The candle without the glass tumbler over it continues to burn. The other candle inside the tumbler goes out after a while. Now conclusion. The second candle goes out because the supply of air is cut off by the glass tumbler. It only burns till the time all the air is used up. This shows that air is necessary for burning. Now reaching ignition temperature. Combustible substances should attain a minimum temperature at which they can burn. The minimum or the lowest temperature at which a combustible 
substance starts burning is called ignition temperature. For example, white phosphorus catches fire at an ignition temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. The room temperature. The ignition temperature of wood varies from 250 degrees Celsius to 300 degrees Celsius. Now, another activity. And the aim of this activity is to show that paper does not catch fire until it reaches its ignition temperature. Material required, paper cup, water, burner, tripod, sand, wire gauze, matchbox. Now procedure. Place a wire gauze on the tripod stand. Pour water in the paper cup and place it over the wire gauze. Place the burner below a tripod stand and light it. After 10 minutes, observe what happens. Observation. The water in the paper cup gets heated. The paper cup, however, does not catch fire. Conclusion. The paper does not catch fire because it does not reach its ignition temperature. The water in the cup absorbs the heat and prevents the paper from reaching its ignition temperature, controlling fire. At times, fire caught in a fuel can be dangerous. Fire spreads fast as the atmosphere everywhere has oxygen which helps in spreading fire. It is at times out of control. Thus, we need to be aware of the ways in which we can control fire. Spraying water over the affected area reduces the temperature below its ignition temperature. This gradually stops a thing from burning, thereby controlling fire. Due to heat, water changes into water vapor which surrounds the affected portion and cuts down the supply of oxygen. Fire can also be controlled by removing any of the three conditions necessary for the fire with fuel, air, heat. Principles of extinguishing fire A fire may be extinguished by removing all the combustible substances, by cutting off the supply of air, by cooling the burning substances below their ignition temperature. Fire extinguishers a device used to extinguish fire is called fire extinguisher. You must have seen the red cylinders of fire extinguishers in cinema halls, banks and other public buildings. Since it is not possible to remove all combustible substances from the place of fire, the fire extinguishers are based only on the two principles. The first one is cooling the fire below the ignition temperature and the second one is cutting off the supply of air. Various types of fire extinguishers are used for different types of fire like water as a fire extinguisher. You must have seen fire brigade people spraying water to extinguish fire at public places. When water is thrown on the fire, it cools the combustible substance below its ignition temperature and the fire is extinguished but it should not be used in putting off fire in electrical wiring as ordinary water conducts electricity and may result in the electrocution of the person involved. Soda Acid Fire Extinguisher The soda acid fire extinguisher is based on the principle of extinguishing fire by cooling the burning substances below its ignition temperature and by cutting off the supply of air. A soda acid fire extinguisher consists of a metallic cylinder having a knob and a nozzle tube. The cylinder is filled with a saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate that is NaHCO3. A glass bottle containing concentrated sulfuric acid is kept inside the metal cylinder as shown in figure. When we strike the knob of the extinguisher, it forces the water solution out through the nozzle. The mixture of the liquid and carbon dioxide extinguishes the fire. Other fire extinguisher that can be used are form type and carbon tetrachloride fire extinguishers. So children, this is the picture of soda acid fire extinguisher. It looks like that. Types of combustion. Combustion may either be rapid, spontaneous or an explosion. 
When a substance burns rapidly and produces heat and light, it is said to be rapid combustion. When the situation is such that a material suddenly burns into flames without the application of any apparent cause, it is called spontaneous combustion. When fire breaks out suddenly with the evolution of heat, sound and light, it is said to be explosion. A large amount of gas is liberated in such a case. Flame The regions of burning gas is known as flame. Some substances burn with a flame, while some do not. A substance is said to burn with a flame only when it vaporizes. Flame can be produced in the presence of a combustible substance and a supporter of flame. All substances are first converted into vapor, only then they produce flame. In case of a burning candle, the wax first melts and changes into vapor. It is the vapor that burns as flame. Parts of flame if you observe a burning candle, you will observe that the flame is not same throughout. It has various regions. The color of the flame is blue at the base close to the wick. There is a region around the wick which is called the dark zone. There is a luminous region around the dark zone. It is yellow in color. Then there is another region that is non-luminous. This region is hardly visible. Now, we shall discuss the various region in detail. The candle, in fact, has three zones. The first zone is the innermost zone of unburned wax vapor. This is the least hot vapor of candle flame. It appears black due to the presence of unburned wax vapor. The second one is the middle zone of partial combustion. This is the major part of the flame with moderate temperature. The unburnt wax give out carbon particles which burn to give yellow light and makes this region yellow and luminous. And the third one is outer zone of complete combustion. This is the zone where complete combustion takes place. This makes this region the hottest one. The color of this zone is blue, non-luminous. So students, this is the diagram which is showing the parts of flame. Outer zone, middle zone, innermost zone. Now, activity. So, this activity is to show the presence of unburnt carbon in the middle zone of the candle flame. And material required for it is a wax candle, matchbox, glass side and a pair of tongs. Now, procedure. Light the candle and allow the flame to steady itself. Introduce a clean glass slide into the luminous region of the flame holding it with a pair of tongs. Remove the glass slide after 3-4 minutes. Note, the hand should be steady. Observation, after a while, a circular dark grey ring forms on the glass plate. There is no deposit in the middle of ring. Conclusion The dark grey deposit show the presence of unburnt carbon particles in the middle zone of the flame. The center of the ring has no deposit as no combustion takes place in the inner zone of the flame. Now, there is one another activity and this activity is to show that the outer zone of the flame is the hottest region. And the material required for these activities are candle, matchbox, copper wire mash and a pair of tongs. Now procedure. Light a candle and allow the flame to steady itself. Using a pair of tongs, hold a thin copper wire mash over the non-luminous region of the flame. Observe after a while. Note, hand should be steady. Observation, the portion of the mash in the outer zone becomes red hot. There is no deposit on the copper wire mash. Conclusion, the outer zone of the flame is the hottest as the copper wire mash glows red hot in a few minutes. There is no deposit on the mash as complete combustion takes place in this zone. Fuels 
Fuels refers to anything that gives out heat energy on burning at a moderate rate in a reasonable quantity. Some commonly used fuels are coal, cow dung cake, petrol, kerosene, LPG, CNG, etc. The process of burning produces heat which is referred to as exothermic heat and is used for various purposes. And these are the pictures of fuels. Characteristics of a good fuel There is a wide variety of fuels available in the market. But what is exactly a good fuel? What makes one fuel superior than the other? The answer to all these questions are provided by knowing the characteristics of a good fuel. They are listed below. The fuel should not be too costly. The fuel should be readily available. The fuel should be easy to use and transport. It should have a high calorific value. A good fuel does not give out any poisonous chemicals, combustion products or environmental pollutants. The end product of the fuel on burning should not be a problem to dispose. Calorific value of fuels. Calorific value of a fuel refers to the amount of heat liberated in joules when one gram of a particular fuel is burnt completely. Harmful products released during burning of fuels. Some fuels release unburnt carbon into the air. This unburnt carbon can cause a number of respiratory diseases. Some examples of such fuels are wood, coal and petroleum. In case the fuel is not completely burnt, it releases carbon monoxide, which is a highly harmful gas. Inhaling this gas could be fatal. Most fuel burn to release carbon dioxide into the air. The increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air adds to global warming. Fuels like coal and diesel release a suffocating gas called sulfur dioxide into the air. This gas is corrosive in nature. Oxides of nitrogen are also released into the air by petrol engines. These then results into acid rain. Acid rain is highly harmful to crops, buildings and soil. Now a day CNG that is compressed natural gas is used in place of petrol and diesel. It is said to cause comparatively very less pollution. And this is the picture which is showing burning of wood. And this burning of wood produces carbon dioxide. Now it's time for Reader's Digest. A combustion reaction accompanied by flame is called burning. Respiration is combustion going on inside living cells. When a hydrocarbon fuel is burnt in a sufficient supply of air, carbon dioxide and water are produced. If the supply of air is insufficient, carbon monoxide is produced instead of carbon dioxide. The amount of heat produced on burning 1 gram of fuel completely is called calorific value of that fuel. Various factors should be kept in mind while choosing a fuel. CNG that is compressed natural gas is a cleaner fuel. So students, it's time to take your leave. We'll meet in the next class. Bye.